Legend tells us that the gods created and destroyed the world four times. A ray of light beamed down from the sky and struck the earth. From it flowed water, spilling out over the mountains and plains. With it, life was born. After their intervention, the gods observed how this life expanded. Patiently, they watched its evolution and development. Trees spread over the arid earth and the sky previously grey and roiled by endless storms, turned calm. Time passed, and the ephemeral creatures that inhabited the world evolved. Intelligence and consciousness emerged. Some of the beings started to speak to their creators. They thanked them for having given their lives meaning, for things worth striving, and for dreams. With all this, something marvelous came into being, civilization. The different peoples multiplied and flourished in harmony, sharing knowledge and becoming wiser and wiser. The gods contemplated all of this with satisfaction. But then, something happened. These creatures, who had come so far, were invaded by ambition and greed. All the knowledge accumulated over centuries, all the advances, were now being used by some to dominate others. That's when the violence started. Wars broke out like a great storm devastating everything in its path. Everything that these beings had achieved evaporated. The gods were furious. A great firestorm raised the earth and burned down its forests. The water that emanated from the mountains evaporated. The peoples were condemned and all intelligent creatures vanished in the flames. Then the gods decided to try again. As the teachings of his master flooded his mind, Teku opened his eyes. In front of him he saw all the stars in the firmament. Suddenly he heard a fire crackling nearby. The last thing he remembered were the voices of alarm. His home was being attacked. Then he staggered to his feet. There was no time to lose.
Echo couldn't go on. It was too dark. Oh no! That poor man told Teku what happened. The tribe of the Wakcha had attacked the village and captured prisoners. One of them was Yaka, the tribe's shaman. He had to do something. Toluca! <laughs> Before going into the forest, Teku looked back one last time. His village, once full of life, was now an immense flame that reared up against the darkness of the night sky. The few survivors left waved goodbye to Teku in a small gesture of hope. The tears streamed down their masks as they thought about all that had been lost. But there was no time to lose. He was determined to find Yaka and the rest of his men. After all, a light guide must never abandon its shaman, no matter what. After three hours of crossing the forest, as he followed the trail of the Wakchas, the first rays of sun started to filter through the branches of the trees. When he emerged from the thicket, Teku stopped at the foot of a cliff. The captor's trail ended there. There was a large marsh down below. 
and a few bonfires dotted the landscape. It could be them. Teku leaned out over the abyss, trying to figure out the best way of getting down. Without realizing that the ground he was walking on was giving way under his feet. His adventure was about to begin. Wake up, Teku. Come on. Teku observed the gigantic carved rock. It appeared to be an effigy of a powerful toad. It must represent somebody important. Nevertheless, the wooden structure didn't seem very stable.
large symbol painted in green was hidden behind the enormous rock. He didn't know its meaning, but he had the feeling it was something important. A strange mechanism seemed to be controlling the water coming out of the enormous gourd. And Teku remembered having seen that symbol before.
was a Wakja warrior. But unfortunately, there was no trace of the shaman. It's possible that the main group had gone on ahead. He had to be careful. They were very dangerous. From the looks of it, the Wakcha warrior had taken the windmill and chained up the boat to prevent anyone from following them. Teku had to get the key. Macho Kuko? 
falta. Oh, cobita. Y se tacha. Guata popina. Guata popina. To cross over to the other side, the old lady asked Teku for two coins in exchange for the trip. He had heard stories about those platforms. The ancients used them to travel rapidly to distant places. But to use it, he needed his candle to be burning.
Teku immediately recognized the man who was asking for help. It was one of the bodyguards of Yaka, his tribe shaman. He had to help him, but how could he get to him?
A swarm of bees is coming after Teku. Paina, paina, chinga. Paina, paina, chinga. The bodyguard had managed to escape his captors, but it ended up getting trapped. Piloita. Acalacran, huate cope. Yo que tú, macha macha. Mi como papa. The Wakcha were going to sacrifice Yaka. He had to stop it. Before bidding farewell, the bodyguard gave Teku an amulet to show his gratitude. He told him it would bring him luck. In the center of the pond, there was an enormous fat toad. Teku recognized him. It was the toad carved in the rock. With a little luck, he would let him pass by. Mm -hmm. 
On the stone column blocking the road, there was a banner with symbols painted on the canvas. The only one that could be seen above the rock showed a leaf. Perhaps it was a clue. Thank you. 
He was a collector of strange objects. Teku could ask him about some of the things he was looking for. It seemed like the collector needed some help getting the box open again.
Chocomá. Y que tú, Chupota. Mambala con Chupita Caca. Chitipe, Chipote. In exchange for the coin, the collector asked for a solitary red leaf, almost impossible to find.
a very old painting. It showed three shamans dancing around a bonfire. Behind them, a thunderstorm was about to break out. It could be one of the ancient rain dances that his ancestors used to perform during droughts.
The corpulent Toad King was one of the coins Teku needed to use the boat. Urinun palote a calacran. Pacheco chaks a tomeku. Choki choki, macaracuelle pute na la mandra. warrior described to her companion how she had caught that enormous fish and how she was planning to cook it for dinner. Urin un palote a calacran. Pacheco chaksa tomeku. Palo po, cuspinien pinopo. Palote a calacran. Pacheco chaks a tomeku. Palupo, guspiñen pinopo. Ia, ia. Cacho por la canonin. La para chumpanato. Panumbo, mutacher paikun. Macaracuelle pute na la mandra? No, tu mote, bicapal, zopiguate. The Wakcha warrior described to her companion how she had caught that enormous fish 
and how she was planning to cook it for dinner. On the edge of the window, there were three deep notches that formed a triangle. From the looks of it, some object had to fit there.
chika pupu cha cha chaka.
It was one of the masks the ancient warriors had placed on their mounts. Those huge beasts were known as Daiwus, and it had been centuries since any had been seen.
Now Teku only had to find the second coin and bring it to the old lady. Teku gave the last coin to the old lady. What a The fairy lady would be waiting on the dock until Teku decided to leave. visible was a tiny speck on the horizon. Teku had never been off the island before, but he knew that long ago his ancestors had come from across the sea. They told stories about the great exodus when his people were on the verge of disappearing. The incessant conflicts between tribes had nearly wiped out the ancient villages turning their inhabitants into nomads who wandered through the forests and jungles in search of new places to settle. Teku looked up at the starry sky. He had always liked doing that. Then he remembered what his master had taught him on one of his first nights in the village temple. Remember, Deku, the importance of light in this world of darkness. Before creation, the gods were surrounded by darkness in an endless night. When the new world emerged, they gave the stars light that with their glow turned the demons into rocks and huge mountains. It was from the light of the gods that life emerged. That's why the role you have been assigned is so important. When you were born, the stars showed that your destiny was to be a light guide. You have the ability to carry an inextinguishable flame with you. And that's why you must remain at my side. As a shaman, I am a messenger. I was born with the power to communicate with the gods, to ask them to help our people and guide them. And the nexus that joins us to them is the light. Fire. Do you understand? 
understand now how important this tiny flame is. But be calm. You have nothing to worry about. Your preparation is just beginning. A sudden clap of thunder brought his attention back to the small boat. The waters were starting to get choppy. A thunderstorm was rolling in. Luckily, from the boat, the sailors could now make out the opposite shore. Teku would never have been able to imagine what he was going to find in this unknown place. of bark with a curious shape was peeling off what was left of the tree. At the moment, Teku had no interest in it. Thank you. 
that state, those pieces of fruit were of no use to him. Deku found a small monkey playing inside the tree. It had probably climbed inside to get out of the rain. Teku decided not to bother it. Poor mother monkey had lost her baby. Maybe Teku could help her find it.
The poor mother monkey had lost her baby. Maybe Teku could help her find it. was a girl digging in the mud. She was using a small spade to collect mushrooms, which she then put into her backpack. She was so focused that for the moment, Teku saw no reason to bother her. It was too dark inside the well to find anything with the hook. Teku could see a sort of basket floating in the well. This was the baby that had been lost by the mother monkey. But to be able to take it to its mother, Teku needed something to transport it safely. <laughs> Deeply grateful, the mother monkey offered to help Teku climb up to the treetops.
That man was pounding a piece of metal with a hammer. He was an artisan, but he was using a technique that Teku had never seen before. For the moment, he preferred not to bother him.
Mesmerized by the light of the flash, the strange insect turned to Teku. appeared to be adders that were growing out of the tree. A bit disgusting. On that part of the ground, the earth was very damp and disturbed. It would be easy to dig there with the right tools. 
They waited until the rainwater soaked the strange seed. Suddenly, the ground started to vibrate. Amazing! The gigantic plant was protecting the candle from the rain. The strange character had no doubt lost his mind. Something in that cave had horrified him. The only thing Teku understood was that the man had been painting on the enormous wall behind him for a long time. like it would start up the strange artifact was broken. Teku would have to find a way to repair it.
the shape. He had finally found him. <laughs> The Watchers carried him inside that cave. Tekka would have to find a way of getting the gigantic stone door open again. Tekka studied the shape of those branches. Suddenly, he had an idea. With the right objects, he could put together a substitute for his friend. Coke, coke, machine. What a, what a, what a. Chuta cola! Chuta chuta cola! started to boil, the little vegetable changed colour, turning red. Teku already had one of the ingredients he needed for the ritual.
there's no other choice. Teku studied that piece of bark more intently. It was the same shape as his captured friend's mask. That gave him an idea. Without asking for anything in return, that troubled man had ground up the pearl in his mortar.
Maybe that blacksmith could help him repair the lever. Mincho, mincho, pasto de chepa, tata. Ataque mucho, Luca. Poco chorro. Patata borruño, chalpica coco, sana chamanta. Chingu palo que migo, chalupa caranca, sale peto coque. In exchange for the repair, Teco would have to relight his furnace.
Tata Borruño Champica Coco, Sana Champaña. Chingo palo que amigo. Blacksmith bid farewell to Teku with gratitude. His forge was back in operation. his candle into the old artifact, a beam of light was projected on the great mural. There it was, a hidden painting. The strange character had no doubt lost his mind. Something in that cave had horrified him. The only thing Teku understood was that the man had been painting on the enormous wall behind him for a long time.
the painting fully. At the center of the mural, there was an enormous monster letting out a terrifying laugh. Under its feet, people were doing all types of tasks. He understood then that this terrible vision was what had driven that man crazy. But what was that creature? And why did the tribe seem to worship it? Oh, 
The strange character had no doubt lost his mind. Something in that cave had horrified him. The only thing Teku understood was that the man had been painting on the enormous wall behind him for a long time. Water, 
Coque, coque, machín. Water, water, water. Chuta, chuta, cala. An old drum had risen up out of the ground when he inserted the jewels into the statues. To make it sound, he needed the right instrument. Chuta, chuta, cala! Anana. Parina, Chango, Bees, Bees, Luga. Chuta, chuta, cala! Coque coque machin, water, water, water. Coque coque machin, water, water, water. <laughs> As soon as he took his first steps in the tunnel, the gigantic stone door closed behind him. The light from the candle bounced down the narrow stone passageway while he searched for some clue that would lead him to the shaman. When he pointed his tenuous light at the ground, Teku thought he could make out the footprints of Yaka and his captors. He was slowly bending down to study them, when suddenly he noticed that several dark forms were emerging from between the rocks. It was a trap. When he stood up, Teku received a sharp blow to the head, and he saw no more. Teku, open your eyes. Come on, wake up. Teku sat up slowly. He felt as if his head was about to explode. Up here, by the light of the gods. I didn't think you survived the attack on the village. How did you manage to get here? I was starting to think all was lost. Despite being locked in those cages, Master and Apprentice couldn't hide their joy at finding one another. Teku told the shaman how some people had managed to survive the fire. He spoke of his adventure in the marshes, of how the monkeys had carried him in flight through the trees. Yaka was astonished by what his apprentice was telling him. 
They talked about this for a long time. Then Teku asked about the strange creature they all worshipped in the painting on the wall of the cabin. His master's expression suddenly turned serious. As if it was something he would have preferred never to have to speak about. It all started long before your birth. As you know, our ancestors were born after the fourth destruction of the world. Since then, we've populated the Earth and tried to honor the gods, whose wrath could bring on another cataclysm. Living in harmony and respecting this world should be our very nature, no? But there is something inside us. A dark corner inherited from the primeval night that makes us place greed and power before all the good we might create. The confrontations between tribes started up again. And fire, once a symbol of wisdom and a sacred gift from the creators, began to be used for destruction. We seem doomed to repeat our fate. But this time we weren't alone. After the first eons, a creature of great power rose up in the mountains. A gigantic being with the face of a bird. Full of wisdom and light, it showed us how to rebuild the cities and recall the teachings the ancients had forgotten. Tribes called him Tezka. It's the same creature you saw in that painting. But the monster Teku had seen in the painting was terrifying. More like a tyrant than a wise leader. His deep, almond-shaped eyes reflected insanity. Seeing his apprentice so confused, Yaka continued with his story. For a time, under the teachings of Tezka, the ancients were able to prosper. Until, little by little, they started to worship him as a god. Then some of them started to perform sacrifices in his honor to gain his favor and attention. In this new situation, the tribes became divided. Some started to capture prisoners from other villages to offer up in sacrifice to Tezka. Others abandoned their homes in search of some place far from all that madness. Our ancestors even dared to cross the sea. That night, we met up with our past again. There was something in that story Teku couldn't understand. As he was telling it, the shaman vacillated, as if he were hiding something. Why would a creature as wise and good as the one Yaka was describing allow itself to be seduced by terrible sacrifices? Nevertheless, before he could ask, the conversation was cut short. Hanging from the belt of the warrior, Teku could see a bunch of keys. These could be the keys to the cells. Now, he had to put his mind to getting them and escaping.
Chacha Chachaca. Yeah. seemed to fit perfectly onto the stone figure. The ancient sacred mount the Daiwus was before him. Mounted on the ancestral beast, he could catch up with his enemies and rescue Yaka. But there was no time to lose. Thank <laughs> you. 
Echo couldn't go on. It was too dark. <coughs> the Wakcher had taken Yaka inside the temple. Teku had to find a way to activate the bridge again so he could cross. It seemed like the bird had stolen the egg from the statue. It seemed like the bird had stolen the egg from the statue. had taken Yaka inside the temple. Teku had to find a way to activate the bridge again so he could cross. At first glance, Teku couldn't tell which egg was the one made of stone. On 
Ana con Couto. Un camote, tila te espera. Pico aguacote gallo. Niuco pina la bongaga. Pico aguacote gallo. Camote, tila te pera. Una con coto. Yuko pina la bongaga. Those people were making offerings to the temple's cultists to avoid reprisals. If Teku left an offering like that, they would activate the bridge to pick it up and he'd be able to sneak into the temple. didn't fit. The symbol on the stone didn't match the one on the door. Thank you. 
Again? How had he got there? Teku preferred not to ask. Mambalakum, chupita caca, chitipe, chipote. Ay, chumay tequitica.
He wouldn't be able to strike the gong until the offering was ready.
Timid, timid, timid. Timid, timid, timid.
Then Teku found him. The huge creature Tesca towered over him on a great throne. Peals of laughter echoed throughout the temple. He appeared to have lost his mind. It was terrifying. Teku was surprised to see that the Wakchas had also been taken prisoner. Something very strange was happening. there was a small hole. It seemed that a sphere of the right size might fit there. Teku remembered having seen one somewhere.
bachata. Tengo alpaca chocoma. Y que tú, chupota. Mambala con chupita caca. Chitipe, chipote.
Thank you, my son. Don't worry, I'm fine. Let's go. We have to free the others. This is the mechanism that opens the cells. Get on the other side. We'll try to activate it between the two of us. The last prisoners were escaping through the window. Teku turned to the shaman. He could tell that something was happening. Something strange. Why were the Wakcha being captured and sacrificed like everyone else? Who were those strange hooded ones guarding the temple? Teku couldn't understand why his enemies would worship a creature that was annihilating them. Above all, he asked himself why the gods had created this monster who obliged them to commit terrible acts. Yaka waited until he was alone with his apprentice to answer his questions. He was clearly suffering and uneasy like someone carrying a heavy weight that is about to crush him. He put his hand on Teku's shoulder and sighed before starting to speak. The Wakchas are not our enemies. They are behaving this way for the same reason our ancestors boarded ships and crossed the sea. They do it out of fear. Out of fear they capture new prisoners and offer them up to Tezka. They fear that if someday they stop performing these sacrifices, the creature could come down from the mountain and raise their villages. The moment they took me prisoner, I understood. A tribe like the Wakcha would only dare to cross the sea in a case of desperation. The worshippers of the creature were demanding a new tribute, to sacrifice the shamans. In their madness, these fanatics didn't want anyone to share the power the gods left on Earth. That way, all the secrets of the light and fire would belong to Tezka. They are the hooded ones you saw in the temple. There is something, Teku, an ancient secret that I shouldn't tell you. But here we are in the great wooden temple, centuries after our ancestors abandoned it. Now I can see things more clearly than ever, and I realize what madness it has been to conceal it for so long. Tezka's birth wasn't the work of the gods. We created him. Teku turned pale. He couldn't believe what his master was revealing. His head was spinning, and a mixture of anger and fear invaded him. This is the secret the shamans have passed on to their successors, generation after generation. It all began when the wars started to break out again in the world. It was the dawn of the fifth creation, and we were again headed towards committing the errors of the past. 
past. To avoid the ire of the gods, the shamans decided to bring forth all their power in the world. They met in the temple, and out of the secrets of light and fire emerged Tezka. They thought that if a higher being that people could see and worship walked alongside them and guided them, they could put an end to the violence. And it worked. At first, the creature brought people back together, and they built cities and became wise again. But Tezka was the work of a And like them, in his heart, ambition and greed was starting to gestate. The dances and rituals ended up convincing the creature of his own divinity. The more the tribes worshipped him, the more his madness and greed increased, until he turned into the monster that today lives in the temple. That luminous and wise being turned into a portrait of the worst of ourselves. The rest of the story, you already know it. I'll go on ahead. I'll wait for you up top. couldn't go on. It was too dark.
Teku, activate the altar! Teku, activate the altar!
Behold, Teku, the fire of the gods is burning on the mountain again. And now what? asked Teku. Now, now comes the most difficult part, starting over. The world as we knew it has ended. The tribes will be at peace once more, and our people will no longer have to hide. But most of all, we must not let our errors be forgotten. We will rebuild our village, Teku. The fire of the gods must burn again in the temples. So today, this tiny candle you're holding means more than ever before. Goodbye.